All right, so, so far we have concentrated on solid timber. Here's a couple of bits of solid timber. There's a bit of uh, softwood, a bit of pine, there's a bit of hardwood. And of course solid timber obviously is just cut straight out of the tree and in some cases maybe dressed off and planed to a size, but essentially cut from a tree and delivered to site. But there is another option to using solid timber and that is using engineered timber. So what do I mean by engineered timber? Well, I've got a box of goodies here that we're all going to go through, different examples of engineered timber. So let's start with the sheet material. So we're going to start with the particle board flooring. And all of this is wood chips, all glued together into a sheet form. And that's really all it is. All the scrap wood chips from the sawmill go off and it just gets compressed and glued into sheets like that. That is a bit of uh, yellow tongue flooring, obviously. Similar to that is our plywood. So plywood is made up of veneers of timber. But there's a bit of a structure to this. They're not just randomly glued together. They're actually glued in a specific order. So with plywood, if you imagine we have lots of thin veneers of timber, probably not quite that thin, but thin veneers of timber are cut from the tree. And when they're glued together, you'll have a veneer laid down in one direction, and the next veneer will come down at 90 degrees. And then the next 90 degrees again, and so on. And that gets all glued together into a sheet thick enough to form a usable panel. So this is a bit of form ply. It's got a sort of a waxy kind of uh, non-stick coating on it for forming up concrete. There's just another scrap of plywood I had floating around. Again, veneers in 90 degree directions to each other. And that's good for floor sheets. It's good for formwork sheets. Anywhere that you would need a sheet to uh, do almost any kind of job. The next one we're going to look at is this one, OSB or Oriented Strand Board. And this is very similar to the particle board sheet. Just lots of uh, wood chips glued together, only the wood chips in this are just a bit bigger. And they're not fine little chips, they're quite, as you can see, quite sizable chunks of timber all glued together in essentially a random order. So sheets like these you can cover a large area fairly cheaply, much cheaper than you could with solid timber and you can get quite a, uh, a nice flat large sheet out of these much easier than you can if you're using individual boards. Alright, let's have a look at some of our other pieces. Let's go to the glue laminated beam. This one is made out of hardwood. The laminated beam, you simply take a number of pieces of timber and just glue them together in sections like that. Hopefully the camera is focusing. And by gluing all of these together, you can get quite a large piece of timber without the risk of large knots or defects in the face. And in fact you can see here, well hopefully you can see there, we have a join in this timber which has been finger jointed through there, so it's not even butt joined. So you can get short lengths of timber all glued together to make up almost any length beam that you need to use. Now depending on the company you're buying this from, they might have different names for it, but it's essentially just a laminated beam. Let's go to this one. This is the LVL, or Laminated Veneered Lumber. Now this one here is very similar to the plywood we had first. This is made up of a lot of number of thin veneers all glued together. But there's a key difference between a beam like that and plywood. The difference being as I said before, with plywood, they make up the layers, they put one one way, one the other, and so on. But with the LVL, they lay all the veneers in the same direction, like that, and glue it all together 
into a thick sheet which is then cut into strips and each of those strips is cut to the size of the joist or bearer or rafter or whatever it is that's going to be needed for the job. So you might ask why is it necessary for all those veneers to go in the same direction. Well that's to do with the direction that the stress is going to be in on the beam. So if you imagine we have two supports and we have a beam that needs to span across those supports. So this could be a, a bearer sitting between two posts or joists sitting between two bearers or anything. When load is placed on that beam you've got a fair amount of compression in the top of the beam but you've got a lot of tension in the bottom of the beam. So if you imagine you have veneers going in that direction the tension at the bottom is going to encourage those veneers to break apart like that. These veneers are not very strong in that direction. If I were to bend that too far I could break it very easily but I don't want to break it because the guys at work will get upset with me. But if those veneers are in that direction all of my grain is going in the direction that can resist that tension. If I had a beam that was constructed like that with every second layer in opposite directions then I'm effectively only getting half of my layers resisting the force that needs to be resisted when the load is placed on the beam. So a 35 mil thick beam would only have the strength of something about 17 or 18 mil thick. So that's LVL, laminated veneered lumber, just like plywood, but all the grain in the same direction instead of being opposite. Now we've looked at the LVL, now we need to look at the LGL, which is laminated glued lumber. So here's just a couple of pieces of 70 to 35 framing that I had laying around. LGL is simply pieces like that glued on the edge, and that's it. That's all it is, LGL, laminated glued lumber. So very simple and it could be as, as many pieces on edge as needed to make up the size beam that's required. Now we're going to move on to something a little bit different. We're going to look at the I-beam or some companies will call it the I-joist and all this is very simple construction just a piece of timber forming a top and bottom flange and a piece of material in the middle forming the web or the center flange of that beam. So this is a piece of OSB for the middle but it could be plywood, it could be anything the manufacturing company decides to use. And these have become very very popular for joists. And I want to touch on why this beam in particular has become very popular. Let's say we've got a couple of bearers a certain distance apart. If I want to put a solid timber joist across that distance I would need a piece of solid timber for the sake of example of a certain size to span across there. Now the equivalent I-beam or I-joist to do that same job might be slightly taller perhaps but it is going to be first of all much lighter and as I feel those I can feel that is just a little bit heavier than that for the equivalent length. The other advantage is that the I-beam or the I-joist is going to be much straighter than a solid piece of timber. Much straighter, much lighter. And if you're carrying 50 joists from one place to another on a building site, lightness is going to be a, uh, a big benefit. So that's the eye joist. Now we're going to finish off with the beast. This is called a CLT or cross laminated timber. This is basically a cross between a laminated beam and plywood. It's like plywood on steroids. So similar to the plywood you can see that both the plywood and the cross laminated timber have grain in two directions. The first grain at the bottom of your screen is a number of pieces of timber going in that direction and then the middle goes in that direction and then so on and so on. Every second layer is in an opposite direction. The difference is these are not thin veneers. These are 
sections of timber glued together just like a laminated beam. So if you imagine a number of mini laminated beams all glued together in different directions, this kind of a section has become very popular in the commercial sector because that panel can be used firstly as a floor panel. You could have two walls quite a distance apart and that floor panel could cover that area without a bearer and joist structure underneath it. The other thing that can be used for is a timber version of a tilt-up panel. That can be used as a wall panel. And you could imagine in a commercial sector that would be exactly what you would need for doing multi-storey jobs if you were so inclined to do it in a, uh, a timber construction. Much, much lighter than concrete panels and much more environmentally friendly. So that is a basic rundown of the main types of engineered timber available to us in the construction industry. So what is the advantage that engineered timber even have over a solid timber option? Well, we touched on one when we discussed the I-beam. One is that they can be made incredibly straight over very long distances. So all of these beam options, you can get them in almost any length, as long as the truck is that's going to deliver it. They're always going to be straight, unless of course you don't want them straight. In the case of the laminated beam, you can actually get beams made curved. They are also a very good use of the timber material. When you're cutting up solid timber, you're trying to cut large rectangular sections out of a round tree. Whereas with most of these options, you're cutting up small pieces and gluing them together. So you can get much more use out of the tree. There's a lot less waste when you cut the tree up. And that's a brief rundown of engineered timber. Thank you and good luck.